you are about to be introduced to the most advanced compact femoral traction device available today, the CT6. With worldwide distribution of over 20,000 units since its introduction, it has proven itself as a sturdy, reliable piece of equipment both in battle and in the civilian markets. Constructed from carbon fiber, a material which has the highest strength to weight ratio of any high-tech construction materials in use today, helps to bring the total weight of the splint in at under 500 grams. The traction adjustment system employs a 4 to 1 mechanical advantage adjuster that gives ample pulling power in precise increments. Economical both in dollars and space savings in that it serves both pediatric and adult application with one unit. There are many other advantages that will be covered later in the presentation. The CT6 is currently in use by civilians and armed forces around the globe and carries a national stock number. Contact us at www.ferratech.com for further information and support. The demonstration you are about to view assumes that you have already made a proper medical assessment of the patient and determined that applying leg traction is the proper course of treatment. Deployment. Deployment is very easy and straightforward. The unit comes in a small cinch bag with cinch straps. Release both of these by squeezing the buckles. Reach into the bag, grab the plastic end piece, and pull it out of the bag. Hold the unit at shoulder height, allowing the tubes to hang and intersect. Attach those that don't and straighten any necessary straps. As it comes out of the bag, all of the straps will already be attached. Application. Once deployed, size the unit alongside the good leg. The ischial cap should be at the top of the patient's pelvic crest, while the end with the ankle hitch should be approximately six inches beyond the bottom of the patient's foot. If the splint appears too long, the ischial cap must be removed and one piece of tubing should be subtracted. If the unit is too short, an additional unit must be added. Remember to replace the ischial cap. All of these straps, including the ankle hitch, are designed to go on the outside of the patient's clothes and footwear. Nothing needs to be removed in order for the CT6 to work properly. Ischial strap. Apply the ischial strap first. One end of the strap must be unclipped from the ischial cap and wrapped under the patient's upper inner thigh. Once this is done, reattach the appropriate end to the ischial cap. It is important that the end with the buckle remains on top of the patient's thigh so adjustments can be made. Ankle hitch. Apply the ankle hitch second. The ankle hitch has been designed to accommodate a wide range of sizes, from a pediatric shoe to an adult ski boot. Unwrap the Velcro strap and align the hitch with the patient's leg. Gently lift the patient's foot enough so that the hitch can be slid under the patient's ankle. The thicker strap should be positioned to be wrapped around the patient's ankle directly above the foot. The second strap should run beneath the patient's foot and be aligned equally on opposite sides of the ankle. If this strap is uneven, slide the loose end along the ankle strap so that it is aligned equally on both sides of the patient's ankle. Once this is complete, the strap should be tightened so as to minimize the distance between itself and the bottom of the patient's foot. This is done by pulling the loose end of the strap coming from the buckle attached to the ankle hitch. Using the traction device. At this time, a minimal amount of traction should be applied so that the splint is resting in its appropriate position. This is done by pulling the loose end of the line coming out of the black block and line mechanism below the patient's foot. To secure tension, lift the line up to the V-jam cleat as tension is achieved. The V-jam will hold the line secure. Please keep in mind that this is a very powerful device. For quantity assurance, the CT6 is placed on a load sensor where it is pulled to 100 pounds of pressure and then left to rest at 60. 
This test ensures the splint's strength and durability. Leg straps. Now it's time to apply the leg straps. This will help minimize patient movement. It does not matter which end of the strap goes above or below the patient's leg. The first strap is placed around the upper inner thigh, ideally above the fracture. The second strap is wrapped above the knee, ideally below the fracture. The third strap is placed below the knee. Finally, the fourth strap is placed directly above the ankle hitch. This strap may be considered optional in some cases. Applying traction. The medic should position himself near the patient's foot at an angle facing the patient's face. Apply traction as needed. Once adequate tension is achieved and the line has been lifted into the V-jam cleat, secure the loose end by tucking it under the bottom leg strap. If you have a long transport time, more traction can easily be applied by releasing the traction unit's line and then retightening it. To release, pull moderate tension on the line and angle it down and out of the V-jam cleat. Redeployment. Redeployment is greatly aided by proper packing technique. From one end, begin disengaging each tubing section one at a time, folding them back on top of itself. Keep the strap straight and in line. Next, fold the ischial strap and ankle hitch next to the tubing. Now, tightly roll the splint, allowing the leg straps to wrap around the entire unit. Slide it into the bag, keeping the straps wrapped around the splint. Finally, close the bag and tighten the cinch strap.